Alrighty, our next song is I Shall Dwell in the House of the Lord Forever. Are you ready for the story? Are you ready for the story? All right, tonight we have a special treat. We have a special treat tonight, and we get a chance to hear from our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Isaac Canales, Pastor Isaac. Yeah. Woo. Come on, give it up. Everybody say, Pastor Isaac. This story is a true story. And it's the story of Big Bill Waldrop and Little Pepe. Once upon a time in the mountains of New Mexico, there is a little town called Chama, New Mexico, 14,300 feet above sea level. 14,300 feet above sea level is a little lumbering town called Chama, New Mexico. And in that town, there were so many different kinds of people, hard-working people, that worked chopping down trees to make lumber. And then the Pacific Southwest train would bring the lumber all the way down the mountain to Albuquerque, and people would build homes and houses with the wood that was chopped down from the trees. One day, in the middle of wintertime, when the lumberjacks were chopping down the trees, and the lumbering season was almost over, there was a man named Sepulveda, who was chopping down a tree, but didn't see the tree coming down. His friend yelled, Timber! And the tree came crashing down right on top of Sepulveda. And he died. He was married, and his wife had eight children. And after he died, they were so poor. They couldn't even afford a house. And when the winter was very cold and the snow came down and the winds blew, they would huddle up against the fire to try to get warm, the mother and all eight of her children. The littlest one's name was Pepe. And they all were so poor because their daddy did not have any work. And they barely had anything to eat. But even like that, their mother wanted each one of her children to go to school. 
and the school was very far away, and they had to get on an old bus, and the bus would take him to a one-room classroom. The name of the school was Chama Public School. And all the children in Chama, New Mexico, would fit inside of that school. Can you believe it? All the high school kids were in there, all five of them. All the junior high school kids in there, all eight of them. And all the elementary school kids were there, all 15 of them. And there was even five kindergartners. Can you believe that? How many kindergartners? Five kindergartners, and one of them was Pepe. And Pepe's family was so hungry that they didn't have anything to eat. Every now and then they had tortillas, and the mother would divide the tortillas between the whole family. They didn't have bologna. They didn't have peanut butter. They didn't have jelly. They didn't know what meat was. All they ate was tortillas, and sometimes they had beans. And they went to school so hungry. And all the children of this family, their clothes were all torn. And it was so cold. They were skinny. And they were hungry. And they didn't have shoes like you have. And they didn't have nice clothes like you have. They didn't have nice t-shirts like you have. They were so poor. And you could see their bones through the holes in their, in their shirt. And little Pepe... He was always hungry. Well, there they were in this classroom, and their teacher was mean. His name was Mr. Miller. He was the meanest teacher that anybody would ever want to have. In fact, Mr. Miller, if you didn't know what two plus two was, he would take a stick, and he would beat you on the back with that stick. And it would really hurt. And... um. In those days, there was no such thing as 9-11. In those days, there was no such thing as going to jail if you were, if, if you were uh, mean. The peop in fact, the mothers and the fathers, they didn't even care if their children were beaten like that. Are you paying attention down there? I want these two people to pay attention. Right there. Thank you. Pay attention. And so, is everybody paying attention? Mr. Miller was mean, and he, the angrier he, the colder it got, the angrier he got. And right in the middle of the classroom, uh, sometimes they would have a pot-bellied stove that would generate heat. And little Pepe, poor little Pepe, he's the only one in the school that didn't have a jacket to keep him warm. And he was so cold, and he was so hungry, and he would cry sometimes because it was so cold. So Mr. Miller said, sit down next to the stove, Pepe, and pay attention. Okay, senor, said Pepe, because he didn't speak English very well. I sit down. And he was always sitting there, and his stomach was always growling because he was so hungry. Whenever the children in the school came, everyone had a warm jacket, parka jackets. They had warm, warm wool jackets they had gloves but little Pepe didn't have anything and he was all so cold that his fingers were turned purple and his toes were turned red and his cheeks would get frostbite that's how cold and hungry he was well every now and then Mr. Miller would say it's time for everybody to go outside and have recreational time so out you go and big Bill Waldrop I want you to go out there and be the class leader when you play sports. Bill Waldrop was strong. He was number 24 in the city football team. And he always wore his football suit to school underneath a big jacket. And everybody respected him. And everybody liked him. And he was Pepe's special friend. Every time Pepe got on the bus, Bill Waldrop would get down and pick Pepe up. And sit him right next to him. If anybody tried to bother Pepe, Bill Waldrop says, If you want to get Pepe, you have to go through me. Nobody wanted to hurt Pepe because Big Bill Waldrop was little Pepe's best friend. Well, 
One day, everybody was outside playing except for little Pepe. He stayed inside the classroom. And day after day, it was so cold that he stayed in the classroom while everybody went out for lunchtime. Well, one day, one of the girls named Andrea came to Mr. Miller and said this. Mr. Miller, I had one sandwich, I had Twinkies, I had a bag of Fritos, and I had an apple juice, and now I only have half a sandwich. What about your Twinkies? They're there. What about your juice? It's there. Only a half a sandwich? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Go outside and play. We'll get to the bottom of this. A few days later, another student named Little Frankie came and said, Mr. Miller, I had two sandwiches, and I had a bag of ding-dongs, and I had an orange juice, but now I only have one sandwich. We'll get to the bottom of this. So he sent them outside. A few days later, another student complained that part of their lunch was gone. And the only one that stayed back during lunchtime was little Pepe. Well, one day it was Friday. It was so cold. It was snowing outside. Nobody went out to play. And Mr. Miller stood up and said, we have a problem in this school. There was only 23 people in the school. But he acted like he was the principal of a big school. And he took out the big stick and he started smacking it on the desk. <laughs> we have a problem in the school. Somebody said, what's the problem, Mr. Miller? Somebody is stealing people's lunches. And we're going to get to the bottom of this today. Nobody's going home until we find out who's been taking the food. That's called stealing in the word of God. And if anybody steals, the word of God says, a rod to the fool's back. Everybody start looking around. Bill Waldrop looked at Andrea. Andrea looked at Frank. They turned around and looked at all the children. And only one child had their head on the desk. And he had his arms over his head. And you could hear him. <laughs> And he was crying. Guess who was crying? Little Pepe. Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Miller said. Why are you crying? I have to tell you, I'm so hungry and cold that I ate the sandwiches because we don't have any food at home. And my mother had to send four of my sisters to live with my auntie. And I'm so hungry. Mr. Gonzalez, there is no sympathy for thieves. Report to the desk immediately. Poor little Pepe was so small and so short and so skinny and so hungry. And he had peanut butter and jelly right here on his cheek. And you could tell. That he was the one that ate the last sandwich. Mr. Gonzalez, come to the desk, please. He was so little and take your shirt off. And he was so embarrassed because his shirt had so many holes on it. And he took his shirt off and you can count his ribs. And he starts shaking because he was cold. And he goes, I want you to put your hands on the desk. And I want you to lean over the desk with your back open. You will get 20 swats with this stick. Because you are a thief. And you are a liar. I don't mean to. I don't mean to. I'm hungry. I don't care if you're hungry. You've stolen and you must be punished. Those are the rules of this school. Well, he took his shirt off. And he laid down on the desk. And he raised up the stick to hit him. And all of a sudden... From the back of the room, somebody said, stop, Mr. Miller. And everybody turned. 
It was Big Bill Waldrop. Mr. Miller, I know that Pepe is my friend. Pepe and I have been friends for a while now. One time I was hungry, and I went to his mother's house, and she gave you a nice tortilla with butter on it. I can assure you that Pepe is not a thief. Pepe is just hungry. And he took my sandwich. And he said, well, the rules say that he must be hit with the stick 20 times. He said, Mr. Miller, is it okay if you hit me instead of Pepe? Because he's so little. And I think that if you hit him, you're going to hurt him. Can I take Pepe's place? Because I'm strong and I'm on the football team. And you can hit me all you want. I'm not even going to cry. Because my daddy has hit me before. And I don't cry when he hits me. And I'm not going to cry if you hit me. Can I take his punishment in his place? Are you sure, Bill Waldrop? Somebody's got to pay the penalty. I'm sure, Mr. Miller. Then take off that football suit. When big, big Bill Waldrop took his suit off, do you know what? He was so strong. He had muscles on his arms and muscles on his back. And he laid down. Can you say that again? He pushed down Mr. Miller. Well, we sure would want him to, but that, did, that would be poetic justice. But guess what happened? Is everybody paying attention? Here's what happened. Big Bill Waldrop took his, clo his clothes off, his shirt and his football pads, and he put his arms across the desk. With one arm, he brought little Pepe next to him and hid him underneath his arm. And with the other arm, he held the desk. Whap! 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 And his back was red, streaked with blisters. Whap! 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 Whap, 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 whap. And Big Bill went. <sighs> Are you done, Mr. Miller? He goes, we're done. Only 20 strokes for a thief, and you took his place. Bill Waldrop, yes, sir. I'm sorry that you had to go through this, but I'm so proud that you took his place. And little Pepe started crying, and he held on to Big Waldrop's leg. He said, thank you, Big Bill. Thank you, Big Bill. I will always be your friend. And Big Bill said, little Pepe, you and I will be friends forever. I just want you to know from now on, I'm going to make an extra sandwich for you every day. I want to say something to you. Have you heard about Jesus? Shh. Everybody keep quiet. Have you heard about Jesus? Did you know that all of us are sinners and we all do bad things? And did you know that the payment for bad things is that God's going to punish us? And did you know that if somebody didn't pay the price for our sins, that we're going to go to hell? Did you know that? And that's going to be our judgment. But did you know something else? Is everybody paying attention? Shh. Did you know that Jesus took our place at the cross? And that your punishment that belongs to you because you're a sinner, Jesus took your punishment. And they beat him on the back and they whipped him and they beat him. And he took your punishment and my punishment on himself so that you and I would not experience the anger of God. Aren't you glad that Jesus took our punishment upon him? 
And guess what else? He died on the cross. He died on the cross for you and for me. And the punishment that belonged to us, God put it on him like Bill, Big Bill Waldrop. How many of you are glad that Jesus took our place at the cross? Are you glad Jesus? If you're glad Jesus took your place at the cross and, and forgave you your sins, would you raise your hand? I'm going to ask you all to stand up right now. Would everybody stand up? Please stand up. Now here's what I'm going to ask. Everybody just keep quiet. Shh. Everybody close their eyes. Bow your head. And close your eyes. Everybody bow your head. Close your eyes. I'm going to ask you right now. If you're, if you're a sinner. And you would like to ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sins. And you're thankful that he took your place at the cross. And you would like to ask Jesus to come into your heart tonight. You would like Jesus to be your Lord and Savior tonight. And come into your heart and wash all your sins away. Would you raise up your hand right now? Say, I want Jesus to be my Savior. Would you raise your hand? Even if you're an adult, Jesus died for you and took your place at the cross. You would like Jesus to cleanse your sins away. I'm going to ask you another question. Um, if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you want him to come into your heart, and you're glad that he took your place, and you want to ask him to say, Jesus, I want you to come in my heart tonight. Would you come up here and stand right down there by the bottom step so we can pray the sinner's prayer tonight? Just like little Pepe, stay down there on the floor, or you can sit on the steps. If you're an adult, you're welcome to come forward. We're going to say a prayer together. I want no noise up here. No noise. No noise. Just come up here and sit down. You're welcome, Ricardo. Oh, shh. Shh. You're not up here to show off, okay? You're up, we're all up here to say a prayer. Anyone that's an adult, you're welcome to come up here and ask Jesus to be your Savior for the first time. Or you could stay there and ask him. And he'll come into your heart. Okay, let's say this prayer together. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody, let's say this prayer together. Dear Jesus, thank you for taking my punishment, for stealing, for lying, for cheating, for disobeying, for being dishonest, for taking that punishment that belonged to me upon your back. I thank you for forgiving me and taking my place. And now I ask you to clean all my sins away, to forgive me, and I open up my heart and I ask you to come into my heart and to live inside of my heart and make it your new home. Because now you and me are friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, let's give Jesus a hand clap tonight. Let's give Jesus a hand clap tonight. Okay, you may return to your seats. You're welcome, Ricardo. You are now a man of God. Okay. What was the teacher's name? Right there in the green shirt. Sorry, guy. What's the teacher's name? Huh? What's the teacher's name? Okay, what's the teacher's name? I'm asking you, yeah. Mr. Miller. Right, come on up here. Who say Mr. Miller? Come here, boy. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Give him a hand clap. Woo! Okay. What was the little boy's name? Huh? Okay, come over here, Richard. Little Pepe. Little Pepe. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay, why did little Pepe take the sandwiches? Right there in the white t shirt. 
Because he was hungry and cold. Okay. Woo! -hoo. Woo -hoo. Okay. All right, here comes another question. Who took little Pepe's place? Um, let's see. Way back there in the blue shirt, three rows back. She has her hand up. Who took his place? Big Wooly. Big I mean, who? Big, um, big Belly. Big, big Billy. Big Billy. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, one last one. Is everybody ready for this one? Okay, what happened to little Pepe's father? What happened to him? Okay, way back there in the green shirt. Way back there. Okay, what happened? He got sma he got smashed by a tree. Right. Everybody give him a hand clap. Yes. Woohoo!